Hello chess lovers, Sunan here and in this video I want to share with you Josef Krejcik's immortal game. Krejcik was an Austrian chess master, problemist, journalist and author and the following game he played against his compatriot Austrian chess master Johann Berger who was also a composer, a major and game study composer uh, who published more than 100 studies. The following game was played in 1911 in Karlsbad. Uh, by the way, probably you know that Krejcik's name is attached to the Krejcik gambit in the Dutch defense, which starts with the following move order. A sharp line with which from the second move on, White is trying to emphasize the vulnerability of Black's kingside. Uh, in our game, the game started with d4, to which Krejcik answered with d5. c4, queen's gambit is on the board, and e5, Krejcik goes for Albin counter gambit. d takes e5, d4, and e4. In here, the main theoretical move is knight f3. If knight c6, then white is either playing g3 or a3 or knight bd2. In the game, after uh, d4, we see e4. Bishop goes on c5, f4, white decided to stick to the one pawn. f6, e takes f6, knight takes f6, bishop d3, knight c6, a3, a5, stopping b4, knight f3, after which both players castled kingside, so at this point, uh, black is a pawn down, right? But all in all, we have an equality. Rook e8. Although this rook e8 is not that good. Playing knight g4 with the idea of knight e3 is better. If queen e2, then a4. Keeping the rook on the f file can be more useful, you know. Instead, we see rook e8. Hitting on e4. And there followed e5. Knight g4, rook e1. Uh, white is stopping. Knight e3 jump, but better was knight g5, playing more actively if g6 than knight e4. And what is just doing great, you know? Instead, in the game after knight g4, we see rook e1. And it was in here that uh, Krejcik found a very beautiful move, and he played bishop f5. How do you like this beauty, guys? Black is sacrificing the light squared bishop in order to lure away this guy which is blocking the d pawn's path. White naively accepted the bishop's sacrifice, but this is losing. Better was queen c2. Instead, we see bishop takes f5, and now let's see what's the problem with it. d3, discover check. King goes on f1. Suddenly, once black is managing to open up the dark squared bishop's diagonal, white's position collapses, you know, and now a question arises, how should black proceed? Please pause the video and try to find Krejcik's next move. Ready? Here we go! Queen h4 is on the board. How do you like this move, guys? If I'm not mistaken, a similar sacrifice we have already seen in Mikhail Tal's game. That was a Benoni defense, if I'm not mistaken. We'll give a try to find that game. The queen is of course untouchable because of this checkmate and with queen h4, yeah, already black is threatening mate in one. White covered the f2 square, but there followed another aggressive move, queen takes h2. Black queen is munching everything on its way. Again, if knight takes h2, then a checkmate will appear on the board. And now as the threat is queen g1 check followed by knight h2 checkmate, White decided to get rid of this wedge on d3, which was keeping under control the e2 square. Uh, thus, White freed the king's path, but there is no defense. Black queen is go now going to execute white king. The knight on f3 also drops. Another check, queen c2. Knight f2 check, king d2. And after bishop e3, checkmate appeared on the board. Nice, a very nice attack by Josef Krejcik, which I hope that you enjoyed greatly. Bishop f5 followed by 
queen h4, queen h2 were just marvelous. In the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to win with the, with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in my next video.